shall become one flesh so that they are no longer two but one amen so this is ordained by god in fact this is the actually and history will tell you that a wedding ceremony is the oldest uh the oldest authorized and ordained ceremony in history and so you're a part of something that god ordained and it's been uh for so long now as you travel through life together i caution you to remember that the true measure of success, the true avenue to joy and peace is much more uh, than just joining together. It is how much of Jesus that you possess. So I urge you that no matter where life leads you, that you build your marriage on the rock of ages, Jesus Christ. In fact, I remember on my wedding day, 
Uh, I don't remember a lot of things. I don't remember <laughs> anything that my dad said when he was marrying us, except for you may kiss the bride and one other thing. And so I want to share it with you. He said, always remember that a marriage takes three. You want me to hold that for you on this side? Here we go. Look at that. Look at that. I'm multifunctional. I can do a lot of things. Okay, you sure? All right. Yeah, I can do more than one thing at once. Right. Yeah. Anyway, a wedding uh, or a, a successful marriage takes three. It takes Anita, it takes Sammy, and it takes Jesus. And as long as you have those three in it, uh, it will work. It'll be a success. Because there are going to come times when you are not going to understand Sammy. You're going to come to a place and, uh, dear Lord, what is wrong with this man? Why does he say these things? Why is he doing these things? He makes no sense. And the same thing, there's going to come times when you are going to come and go, I don't get her. Because there has been no man in history who's ever been able to understand a woman completely. It's impossible. cannot happen. And so there's going to come those times when you're going to get frustrated with each other, not understanding why, what, what's going on. But as long as this marriage is based on three, and Jesus is in the middle of it, in those times of misunderstanding, He's going to take your hand, he's going to take Anita's hand, he's going to pull you back together, and he will be the glue that constantly keeps you connected. And so it's so important that there is always three, and those times will come. It's times that you want to make sure that he is involved in every aspect of your life. Because if you both do that, make Jesus your mediator, keep him the central focus of your lives, of your marriage, of your family, then he will always pull it back together and make it work when everything seems to be uh, dysfunctional and unable to work. And so it's important. It's important to always involve him. I will tell you this. You guys have sat under me long enough as your pastor that you understand when I tell you this. It's important. As long as Sammy loves Jesus more than you, you're going to be okay because he'll make sure that you always do right by her. And if you love Jesus more than Sammy, he'll make sure that your heart and your life, you always do right by him. And therefore, then you never have to fear what the other one is doing, all right? Because you're keeping him. And so I want to share with you very quick, I got four keys that I picked up for you, four keys that I, I feel that are very, very important. And you'll notice that these four keys, they are uncut because it's up to you guys how you cut them, what you make of them. But four very, very valuable keys. And in these four keys, the first key I will give you is a house key. And so I urge you to build a home and not a house. A house is something that people, they go to and they try to get away from. A house is something where two people kind of dwell in the same dwellings, but they live two separate lives. But a home is something that every day you work hard to get back to. A home is not something you try to get away from. It's something you work to get to. Why? Because the other person that makes it a home is there. So I urge you both to first build a home. The second key that I would give you is a shed key. And you're like, why on earth would you give me a shed key? A shed key is very important because if you build a shed like ours, our shed is what holds all the things that my wife and I has accumulated together. A shed represents all the things that we've accomplished together. The good times, the fun times, all the things that we have dreamed together, we begin to build up in that shed and you can walk through that shed and you can find all the things and all the accomplishments. And so what I encourage you to do is dream together, have fun together, build a life together, do these things and be a success together. So I encourage you to build a shed. The third key I'll give you is a fence key. You see, you put up a fence and a gate around your home to keep out predators. It's very important, you need it to protect those that you love, the things you love, the things that you've worked hard for. This is what prayer does. Every day I encourage you to spend time praying over your spouse. Pray over your marriage, pray over your minds, pray over your eyes, pray over your finances. Take time and make it a specific point of prayer that you pray over one another. Because when you do that, you are building a hedge of protection around them. So I encourage you 
to build to build a fence around your marriage. The last key that I'll give you is a very important key, and that is a car key. Very important a car key. Now I urge you that when you have a car key, it's important that it is a Chevy key. <laughs> the reason why is is like a Chevy, you want to build your marriage on a rock. On a rock that lasts, that goes. You don't want a Ford key because you don't want it to break down constantly and end up in the repair shop and constantly have issues and have to invest money and you know it's going to break down again, right? So you want it to be a Chevy key because you want it to be built on a rock. But important, the reason why, in all seriousness, that I give you a car key is because you want it to go somewhere. You want your marriage to, to last. You want it to go for the long haul. You want to have an adventure together. But the most important reason why I give you a car key is because I want you to remember that you don't need to be the driver. You don't need to be the driver. Let Jesus take the wheel and let him drive and be the driving force behind your marriage. And if you do, in the end of this thing, it will be a great success and you'll have a great adventure as you do that. And so I encourage you, these are four keys. I'm gonna give them to you, Sam, as a reminder. It's up to you both what you make out of them. The one thing that I would encourage you though is please invest in it together. This marriage will be what you two make out of it. And if both of you do it together, it will be a great success, okay? And so uh, at this time, you both have prepared your own vows. And so we want you to, uh, to share those. Which are we gonna go ladies first? No, nope. Sam. Yeah. All right. Save the best for last. Here we go. <clears throat> All right. So, bear with me, guys. Heavenly Father, I stand before you today so thankful that you brought a woman into my life that seeks to please you first. Lord, although we all have flaws, this woman was made perfect for me. Not a day goes by that I'm not eternally grateful for her, Lord. Today, I commit myself to Anita, Samuel, and Jacob. This is a lifelong commitment to the good and the tough times of marriage. This is all a commit, also a commitment to you, Lord, that I live by the JOY acronym, putting Jesus first, others second, and myself last, yourself, either why. I know this is the only way for a happy and successful marriage. Lord, I ask you, I ask that we never lose a hunger for ministry, um, that we as a couple and as a family seek to serve. Lord, I feel so blessed to have Samuel and Jacob as my stepsons. Samuel is a kind hearted, loving child whose personality reminds me so much of his mom. But don't let that fool you. Uh, he'll snipe you with a nerf gun, give him a chance. <laughs> Jacob, oh Jacob. Jacob, he is smart and he's a fearless child. His approach to life has inspired me to be more daring and adventurous. He'll jump off of anything once. He'll try any food once, no matter how spicy. This will serve him great in life. And I can't see what God has in plan for these two boys. To Robert and Sheila, you guys raised an amazing daughter. I wake up every morning thanking God for her. I'm committed to showing her how she deserves to be loved and heard each and every day. I'm very blessed to have amazing in-laws. You guys have been so loving and welcoming not only to me, but my children as well. To Fella, you've meant more than you would ever know to Anita. Uh, the stories and adventures I hear from you two growing up, or her growing up, are, are endless. And uh, you, met, you met a lot to her. To my children, you've been with me um, through the ups and downs. And you've been my joy um, ever since each and every one of you were born. I love sharing this moment with you guys. And love, uh, last but not least, you're everything I've wanted and more. A friend, but a Bible study partner, someone whose opinion I cherish. You treat my kids with so much love and kindness. The effort you put into our relationship since day one has never went unnoticed. You're beyond special. With our families and God present here today, I commit my life to you, Jesus, and our children. I love you. Sammy, 
When I began to start searching for my person, I asked God for someone with very specific characteristics. I wanted a man of God who strived to live a Christ-centered life, would not love just me but my kids unconditionally, was patient and a good listener, could have a deep and vulnerable conversations, was comfortable with expressing emotions, could make me laugh, and a man who would look at me the way that my dad still looks at my mom after all these years. Since the moment that we first spoke, we've been inseparable. You made me your priority since day one, even when you had no obligation to. Every single day since then, you've made me feel like I was God's greatest gift that you cannot believe that you have. You treat me with such care, gentleness, respect, love, and appreciation that leaves me wondering what I've ever done to deserve such a love. <laughs> you may not be perfect, but your heart absolutely is. You love like Jesus. You put everyone else's needs before your own, and you give all of your heart and energy to those that you love, even if it means you have to make sacrifices. I've always admired your heart to serve others, and your deep sense of integrity to honor God in even the little things. Your love is unconditional, choosing to only see the best in me and my children, and you show your love for us in everything we say and do. You're quick to listen and slow to speak. When things have gotten difficult or complicated, your response has always been in patience, kindness, and gentleness. How do you do that? <laughs> you may not know it, but I am always learning from you, and you are teaching me to become a better mother, daughter, and spouse. When I had to put my dog Toodles down, we had only been officially dating for four months. Obviously, the situation was extremely difficult for me, but when we were in that room with her to say our final goodbyes, you were just as emotional as I was, to the point where I felt like I needed to comfort you. <laughs> <laughs> but that just goes to show the depth of your heart. You love what I love simply because you love me. Although we've only known each other for about a year and a half, in that time we really packed in the questions and conversations. After going through three huge decks of get to know you cards and answering hundreds of questions packs on a couple's app, I'd say we're at least three years in on how well we know each other. <laughs> at least. We've become best friends very quickly and there's no one else I have more fun with than you. Average, everyday things are an adventure and your unexpected witty comments make me laugh even long after you've said them. When you're not around, it feels like a piece of me is missing, and so I'm thankful that I get to spend every day with you for the rest of my life. So, I'd say that God has given me everything I've prayed for and so much more. I promise to honor the gift that he has given me by spending my time on this earth, trying to make you feel as loved as you make me feel, by honoring, respecting, encouraging, and accepting you for all that you are, even though you're an Android user. Yeah. <laughs> I promise to be gentle with your heart, <clears throat> and to always check myself to be sure that I'm not taking for granted your love and selflessness. I promise to pray for you, hold your hand through the trials, and stand with you in those times when everything around us feels like it's falling apart. Although the roll all through the roller coaster of life's ups, downs, and in-betweens, you can count on me to be buckled in beside you while trying to look for the beauty that is in every season. Gia, Uriah, Teo, and Aubrey. At times, this new family dynamic might be confusing or even complicated for all of us. But I want you to know that as, I'm, as I am promising my commitment and love to your dad, I am also promising my love and commitment to each of you. Not out of obligation, but because you're wanted. My life is so much better because you're in it and you are the missing pieces to my family. My intentions are never to try to take the place of your mom. God chose her to be your mom for a reason, and no one can do that better than she can. But I hope that instead you see me and my family as a new extension of your own, a bigger village to love you and support you in your lives, more people to cheer you on at graduation, celebrate your victories, but also more people to pray for you and be there to lift you up when you're struggling or feeling down. This whole group of people that you see here, they're all a part of your village now. We have your backs. I want to thank you for the love and acceptance that you've freely given me as a stranger coming into your lives. You are remarkable children and I'm blessed to be able to have a front row seat and watching you grow and fulfill your purpose and calling that God has on your life. Lastly, I promise to our new family that I will strive to always keep walking in faith no matter how difficult times may be. I promise to pray for each one of you when no one's watching and grow to be more like Jesus in every way. It is only then that I could be the wife, mother, and bonus mom that you all deserve, and you all deserve only the very best. Oh. <laughs> I, 
I still remember uh, the first time I met Sammy a couple of times, and I'll never forget. I think it was about the third time she brought you to church, then Anita cornered me, and she's like, okay, Pastor, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think about it? She was quizzing me out. I said, I don't know. So he didn't realize that I cornered him the next service and was asking a bunch of questions, but it was more so because she asked me to figure him out. And, uh, yeah. But uh, I tell you what, I quickly gave my approval. She didn't need it. She already, she already knew. And I, I love the fact that how well that I've watched you two complement each other, and uh, your families mesh so well together. And so I'm, I'm very proud of you. You guys have chose to use the symbol of your marriage covenant with a ring. And so do we have the rings? Do we have those. All right. Okay. So we're going to start with you. So you want to take her hand. Alright, you ready? You want ready. to repeat after me? Alright. I Sam. I Sam. Place this ring. Place this ring. On your finger. On your finger. Okay. As a symbol of my covenant before God. As a symbol of my covenant before God. And I choose you to be my wife. And I choose you to be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. The sickness and health. The sickness and health. The richer or for poorer. The richer or for poorer. To love and cherish you as long as we both shall live. To love and cherish you. Place this ring as a symbol of my covenant. That I choose you to be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. For sickness and in health. For sickness and in health. To love and cherish you as long as we both shall live. To love and cherish you for as long as we both shall live. As much as you two have chose in the presence of God and all your friends and family to choose one another uh, to spend the rest of your lives together like the rings that you just both placed on each other's finger they're perfectly circled showing that there is no exit and so from this one we're telling you there is no exit we're gonna work this out we're gonna stay together because we've got Jesus in the middle of it it is with great honor and privilege Sam, I pronounce you husband and wife, and you may kiss your bride. <laughs> All right. All right. It is with great honor that I present for you for the first time, Mr. Sammy and Mrs. Anita Romo. Maestro, yes, sir. here we go. Bump them tunes. The sun is shining. Woo. Don't go. want to come and blow. Put on your white dress. Check out the baby. It's a big day for me. I call my mom and daddy. Baby, you call your suit. Put on your white dress. Check out the baby. It's a big day for me.